I'll be demonstrating how to work Kitchener in the round when you have a long tube and we need to join the ends of the tube together to form a circle as in this cowl uh, that I have here. So I started with these stitches on a provisional cast on which I have removed and placed on a circular needle. These are the stitches where I ended my knitting, so they're live stitches on their circular needle. So both ends of the tube need to have their own separate circular needle. Now we're going to be Kitchenering them closed, and the Kitchener stitch is worked in much the same way that the Kitchener stitch is worked when you're closing just one tube. So if you would like a close-up tutorial on how to do the Kitchener stitch, I recommend that video for you. But to begin with, I am going to take my live working yarn that I have here and I'm going to cut it so that it is four times the circumference of the tube that I am going to be closing. We are going to have one circular needle will be our front needle, one circular needle will be our back needle. Now we are going to join the first stitch on the front needle ignoring this other side of the this end of the tube. We're going to ignore this side of the tube on the back and we are going to be joining it to, it's actually the last stitch of the round in this uh, second end of the tube and we're going to call that the back needle. So here we are, was where we are going to join the tubes together. So again I'll just show you this first stitch here and this is going to be the first stitch that we're going to take off with the Kitchener stitch. It's actually the last stitch on the other end of the tube. Before we begin doing any of the Kitchener stitch, we are going to do a little trick that will help you at the end. I'd like you to take a marker, a removable marker, and Turn around so you can see just hanging on that stitch that's on the needle. The first one we're going to take off on the back needle and get another removable stitch marker and put it on the first stitch that we're going to take off on the front needle and these will aid us at the end. So now we're ready to begin Kitchenering these stitches together and removing them off the needle. So here is the first stitch on the front needle and here is, you can see, the first stitch that we'll be kitchenering off on the back needle. Because we are working in the round, the difference between this technique and the usual kitchener stitch is we do not need to do a setup for this. We're just going to begin the usual mantra for the kitchener stitch. We're going to go into the first stitch on the needle, drawing our working yarn through Got a nice long one here. And I'm going to take that first stitch off the needle, a little tug, go through the next stitch as if to purl. This is just the usual Kitchener formula that we follow. And we're gonna go to the back needle, go into that first stitch as if to purl. My marker's in the way a little bit there. There we go. And take that off and draw my yarn through. So as you can see, I'm Kitchenering in the usual fashion. My circular needles may get in the way like they are for me here, but we are going to be Kitchenering across the round. So I purled off. Now I am going to knit, go into the next stitch as if to knit and leave on. So that is the usual Kitchener way. I'm gonna work my way all the way across the round. And as I said, sometimes it can be fiddly. My circular needle keeps getting in the way. Sorry about that. So now I'm going to keep Kitchenering all the way around the entire piece. And when I get to the end, I will have one stitch left on each needle and I'll show you how to finish. Now I have Kitchenered all the way around my piece. You can see it's joined very nicely. We've got a nice seamless join and no pattern interruption. 
and I have one stitch left on my front needle and one on my back needle. And I'm back here to the two little stitches that I left on the removable stitch markers. These are going to act as if they are the second stitch on the needle and will help close this hole up and uh, leave a nice finish. So to finish the Kitchener on the front needle, I'm going to go through the last stitch on the front needle as if to knit and take it off. Then I'm going to grab, I can get rid of that needle, and grab the, on the front needle, this stitch that I left on the stitch marker, and I'm going to go into it as if to purl. And draw my yarn through. And now I can take that stitch marker off, and that is finished. Then now you can see I lost my needle here, but go back into this last stitch on the back needle, go into that as if to purl and take it off, drawing my yarn through there. And then take my very last stitch, the one that's on the back needle, and go in through that stitch as if I were going to knit it. And draw my yarn through. And I can take the marker out and my end is closed and now I have uh, you may wish to have woven this end in from the other piece if you want if you left it hanging as I did you will want to weave these ends in and we'll do that with the duplicate stitch so that way it will close up any little gap here I will take the tail from this end and weave it in this way and the tail from the front needle and weave it in this way using the duplicate stitch. So I will go ahead and come up under, I'll take this and go under a stitch and we will just start working the duplicate to weave in my end. If you would like to have a full um, lesson on the duplicate stitch, uh, go ahead and see my duplicate stitch video. But that is Kitchenering in the round or closing two ends of a tube. Happy knitting!